Hey guys, Danny with Stock Car Surplus, and we are back in the shop today with new and improved audio. What do you think about that? Behind me is the Toyota Super Track Day build that we're working on. This video is going to be a compilation of a bunch of things I've done on the Super over the past couple of days. During the entire teardown process, I went through the car and I found a lot of different brackets and mounts on the car. Things for old, older style stanchion casters, telemetry mounts, just stuff that was added to the car through the evolution of its build from a COT test car to a wind tunnel car to a body submission piece. We're not bound by a NASCAR rule book as far as where things are mounted and a weight minimum for this car. So I can build it as light as I want. I got rid of a bunch of that stuff. I cut open a larger hole in the floor for the rear gear cooler and the package tray. I've also added some rear brake cooler ducts through the package tray down to the rear brake calipers. All of that stuff you're going to see today. And by the end of this video, I swear to you, you're going to see the brake pedals mounted in this car and a set of reservoirs. Let's get to it.
So what I need to do, and I forgot to do yesterday, is cut out this old sensor mount and the old floor pan mounts. I'm going to be using a solid carbon floor that's insulated underneath and has an air gap. But I didn't test fit it until after I rolled the car in yesterday, so all of this has to come out. Once I get my seat in, I can fabricate a set of leg boards that match the seat, square everything up straight, and mount it to the floor. Now I've got to blow this thing out and start doing some touch-up with some chassis paint. So this is the final product. I've cut all four of those tube stanchion holders out on all four corners of the chassis right on the frame rail. Ground it down, buffed it smooth, put two coats of paint on it, got all four off. So it came out pretty good. All together we've cut about 10 pounds of weight off the car. This is the left front and then we can move to the rear. And then here is the right rear. I've also touched up the entire area around the rear gear cooler since we've opened it up and enlarged it. I've also drilled the mounting holes for the cooler. Up next, we're going to trim the carbon duct that fits on the interior portion. I'm going to take the gear cooler itself, install some floating nut plates on it so that I can bolt it through the interior. And we'll put some high temp weather strip on it and get it installed. Now that we have the chassis paint touched up on the car and the actual gear cooler opening trimmed to the size that we need, we're going to move on to installing the actual cooler and the carbon ductwork. Behind me I have the stacked gear cooler and the carbon ductwork we're going to use. When I say that this is a stacked cooler, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, it's two coolers in one. This is a newer style that actually uses a cooler on the top and the bottom. And if you can look at the welds, you can see where the tanks have been split. The top portion is going to cool our transmission. The bottom portion is going to cool our rear gear. I prefer this style because it's much more efficient. In an older style stack combination that was run 
for many, many years. It worked and it was good. It just wasn't as efficient. And what I mean by that is I'll use this power steering cooler as a representation. It would take one cooler, mount it to the package tray underneath the car, and it would stack the second cooler on top of it. The only bad part about that is you have one cooler getting fresh air in the front, and then the one that's behind it closest to the ground underneath, that's getting hot air blown from the front cooler. It's, it works. It has worked for several decades on many race cars. Like I said, it's just not efficient. It adds more weight, and it's kind of bulky and unsightly. So I'm going to go with this combination. The next thing that I do need to do with this is install some floating nut plates in the bottom tabs all the way around so I can mount this underneath the package tray. Once this is mounted underneath the package tray, I have to trim the carbon duct. I only have to take about three quarters of an inch off the bottom of this particular ductwork. The cooler will mount here, our package tray floor pan here, our cooling carbon duct will go on top and seal with some high temp weather stripping. First thing I need to do, put floating nut plates in here, trim and radius the bottom of this and drill it to meet the same pattern on our cooler. Let's get started. Now that I have the base of this cooler trimmed so that it fits the floor pan, we can get it in place. And if you can see, the cooler itself is actually the same width as the opening cut in the floor pan. And the floor pan opening is actually the same size of the open core of the cooler. The tanks extend about a half inch on each side. So now that I have it in place, I'm going to use a metallic Sharpie to mark the bolt holes of where I need to drill it. We'll drill those out, and then down here, I need to mark it for my fuel line conduit. So we'll mark that as well. Now we can pull this out, drill the holes, trim it for the conduit, and put high temp weather stripping on the back side of it. When the cooler goes and gets mounted in, it's going to mount here on the bottom with floating nut plates, and we will bolt through from the inside, through the carbon duct, through the floor pan, and into the cooler. But this is what we're going to use for a track day car. Now I need to drill this for our quarter inch mounting hardware. We're going to drill these out and then I'll take it outside and trim it for the fuel line conduit.
So this is our final product. This is the cooler duct. Everything's been sealed up. Everything's been trimmed. This is gonna mount on the package tray. I've got all the floating nut plates mounted in our gear cooler on all four corners. And like I said, this is gonna mount in the car like this on the package tray. This will be the bottom for the rear gear cooler. This will be for the transmission. Once it goes into the car, it's gonna be held in place with those nut plates through the sheet metal with the gear cooler like this. Let's finally get this thing installed. All right, guys, rear gear cooler ductwork is installed. My wife came out and helped me install it in the rear gear cooler under the package tray. We've also put in some brake cooling mounts for the rear brakes as well. Let's take a look at that. Here's our rear gear cooler mount. It's mounted in the package tray. The gear cooler is underneath. You can see it through the ductwork. We're gonna pipe cold air in from the right side window down into the duct with a dual NACA duct inlet. I've also got my package tray rear brake hose duct work put in as well. Cold air is gonna come in through the, the quarter window. It'll get pumped down through the package tray through a three inch hose to each rear hat and rotor on the rear end housing. Something I wasn't able to get on film because like every YouTuber has, at least once in their life, their GoPro battery dies. This is my track bar mount. I punched a hole in the, the package tray with a rotor brooch, put an aluminum cone on it because I'm not going to use a jack tube all the way to the rear window. This car will never have live pit stops, so anytime I adjust this, it's going to be in a garage setting. I did punch a hole in the rear window with a rotor brooch. That came out nice, and I put another decal on it. I think the way the jack bolt and the hole installation came out looked pretty good. Underneath... Here we have our rear gear cooler mounted. As you can see here, we use floating nut plates to hold it in place. We use quarter inch hardware to hold the actual duct work itself. I'll use some 45 Wiggins on the bottom and I'll route the lines over to the hard tunnel and forward to our transmission for cooling. The top is gonna to be for our rear gear. I'll get some 120 Wiggins, number eight, come off of here and down to the rear end housing, which will sit here. You can also see where the track bar adjuster was installed. I ran it through the interior package tray towards the fuel cell. This, go, this goes up through the car, through the back window. This uses a number 1024 bolt and a nylon lock nut to keep it in place. I'll show you some of the duct work that we're gonna use on the rear housing. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna plumb three inch duct to the back of our hats and rotors. Keep it very simple, blow some cold air on it. Let's move on to installing our brake pedals. So this is everything that I need for my brake installation. This is a Tilton 900 series brake pedal assembly. This is a clutch and a brake slave cylinder pedal assembly all in one. It uses a steel brake pedal and an aluminum clutch pedal. I rebuilt this entire assembly. I pulled it apart, replaced the trunnions and the pedal mount. I pulled the balance bar completely apart and rebuilt the balance bar as well. You can see where the the new lithium grease and everything is in it. It also has new trunnion mounts for the balance bar as well. This is a floating master design. And what I mean by that is the master cylinder actually mounts to the pedal assembly and floats. There are some where you might see where your master cylinder has a flange on it and it's mounted to the, the actual firewall of the car. This keeps the actual master mounted to the what is called the pedal box assembly that mounts to the actual chassis of the car. This doesn't mount to the firewall in any way. It just floats through the firewall. This plate will go on the front of our pedal assembly. This will be on the inside of the firewall. This will pass through. This will be on the outside of our, our firewall and it will bolt together like that and sandwich this between the firewall. Our clutch and our brake master cylinders will float in that gasket and hook to the pedals in the rear. This whole assembly goes in the car relatively easy. I rebuilt both of these. These are 
completely rebuilt with new seals, new plungers, new kits. These are gonna go in the car. I actually have the clutch one on order. It'll be here soon. This is my mounting hardware. It's been drilled for safety wire. This is the actual bar that holds our masters in front with the trunnion. I've got a new remote brake bias adjuster. We're gonna use that mounted to the firewall. It'll come through, mount to our gauge panel. And last but not least, a set of billet brake reservoirs. These are really nice. They're actually 100% CNC machine billet aluminum, and they're made by Roush. Roush actually ran these on their cars for years. I had this set. I believe this came off of an old Carl Edwards car that I scrapped. I believe it had a bent rear clip on it, and I got it pretty cheap, and I mean, I, I picked it to the bone. Let's get all this put on the car now. All right, guys, first part of our installation is to get this actual gasketed floating plate ring installed. This goes in from the back. We just slide it in back here behind the pedals. This will go in between the firewall and the pedal mount. And then it's got an aluminum retaining ring. It goes on the front. We'll hang this here. And I'll mount this to the firewall with a bunch of 1032s. These are all stainless hardware. So we'll get this in. That goes in. And then on the back, I'm going to use nylon lock nuts. I'm not going to tighten everything. I'm just going to get everything in, as the old adage goes. Get them all in before you tighten them, or you'll bind it up and everything will get pinched, and you can't figure out why anything's not working. So what I'm going to do is I'll go through. I'll push them all through. I'll stick the nylon on the back and let them sit there. Pretty simple installation as far as this plate goes. Some of them can be a little tricky because of where the actual brake line is behind this. All right. Now that that one's done giving me a hard time, let's get the rest of these in. Now that I've got the retaining ring in, let's move on to the pedals. I think this came out nice. Next, we'll start from the inside, push the pedals through, and mount them to the chassis on the inside. All right, let's get these installed. These are going to slide through the gasket towards the front. We use our hardware to get it lined up and mounted. It's a pretty simple installation. I'm going to safety wire these together.
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to install my front and rear masters. This way I can set the height of my reservoir setup and figure out where I want it to go. So we'll set both of these in, get them through the mounting flange in the gasket, and then we'll use the mounting bar to get everything set in place. This uses a bar and a series of spacers to hold our master cylinders in. So that'll go in. The bar will come through. The next one. Now it's here. And then we'll mount through here for the clutch. So this will come, and then the clutch will be mounted all the way off to the left side. I'm still waiting on that one to come. I ordered it a couple days ago. But like anything since COVID, parts availability has been a pain in the butt. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark where we're going to put the reservoir. So I want it to go in here and mount here. Right about here is where I want to put it. And that'll give me plenty of room between my outlet and my inlet on my master and the outlet on all my reservoirs. This also still gives me enough room to get the cap off completely and to be able to see in and fill the reservoir. So I'm not worried about that. The cowl is completely different on the Xfinity car with the composite body versus the older style cup car that actually had a full cowl across it with a flap on it that you could completely remove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape on here. I'm going to mark this and then we're going to drill some holes and get it mounted. Why is this tape being such a pain in the butt? Oh, come on, man. I just bought this roll. Are you kidding me? Let's try this again. All right. I swear if it rips, this whole roll is going in the trash can. There. Got my fine line sharpie. And I want to mount these right in here. So what I'll do is I'll mark each side. Stand back and look at it and make sure it's level. And over the center of this, we're going to drill here. And we are going to drill here. One. And there's two. And I can peel this off. It will deburr the hole. Next, we're going to mount our reservoirs on the back. There's two stanchions, and we're going to use fender washers. And number 
1024 Allen head bolts. These are drilled for safety wire and we'll safety wire these as well. We'll get the right side tightened down. Once this is in place, we'll safety wire both of these. And this isn't going anywhere. Unfortunately, my brake line plan isn't going to work out. I've got plenty of fittings with number three 90 degree A in fittings on them, and they're perfect, except for they're clocked wrong. And when they're mounted to the firewall and to the master, it kicks my floating master cylinder to the right and actually binds it up against the pedal mount. So scrap that idea. What I do have plenty of are number three A in and banjo lines. Uses a banjo fitting on one end, straight number three on the other. And I've got plenty of banjo bolts. The only problem is I have banjo number three A in caliper bolts and not master cylinder bolts. These, when installed on the line, are about a half inch too long and they bottom out in my master before they get to the crush sleeve and the fitting on the line. Good thing I made a call. My master for the clutch assembly is in. I'm gonna pick it up tomorrow and I've ordered a bunch of fittings. I've ordered a bunch of number three banjo bolts and a bunch of number three and four banjo fittings for my reservoir and my masters. I'm just gonna convert everything to banjo bolts so everything floats nice and easy and doesn't bind up my master. I got pretty far today. It's a combination of a few videos over the last two or three days put into this one. Let me show you what we've been able to accomplish. Our reservoirs are in, pedals are mounted, front and rear master cylinders are in, all of our stainless brake lines are in. Carbon gear cooler duct and the carbon duct work for my brake hoses through the package tray are also installed left and right. You can also see I got my track bar adjuster in as well. Underneath, you can see where the duct work comes through for my rear brake hose. And you can also see where our rear gear cooler is installed. Over here, you can see through the fuel cell portion of the package tray where our track bar adjuster goes up and towards the rear window. Here you can see where I've drilled the rear window with a roto brooch, cleaned it up, put a new decal on it, and there's our track bar adjuster. I think everything came out pretty clean. I'm very happy with it, with the way it looks, both with the duct work from my rear brake hoses, my cooler duct, and underneath the chassis where I've touched up the paint and removed a bunch of brackets. Before, you can see the round two brackets that were on the inside here. Everything's been touched up and cleaned up. I'm happy with the way it came out. So what I'm gonna do next, like I said, is I'm going to get these fittings and we're gonna go from the firewall with a straight A in and we're gonna mount right here with a banjo bolt. That's gonna be the setup I'm gonna use. I've just gotta pick up the parts tomorrow. Hey guys, that's a wrap on this video. And I just ran in the corner of that car at my knee and it hurts like a mother. That's besides the point. We've got our pedals installed, our reservoirs installed on the firewall. I think that came out great. Unfortunately, I didn't have the correct lines that I needed to hook them up to the actual stainless lines on the car. I'm going to pick up some AN fittings tomorrow and some banjo bolts to get that done. We've got our gear cooler duct in, got the gear cooler in. In the package tray, I put our through ducts for the rear brake cooling. So there's one on top, one on the bottom, flows through the package tray down to the rear brakes. It's going to cool those. I got the track bar mount in, cut a bunch of brackets off of the car, cleaned up the frame a little bit and touched up the paint. I'm really happy with the way that it's coming out. I like the way it looks. It cleaned up underneath the car a lot. In the next video, we're going to assemble the rear end housing. It's a road course housing. We're going to clean it up and paint it. I'm going to put the center section in it. It's got an internal pump. I'm going to show you guys how to measure for floater rear axles that go on a stock car housing. I get that question a lot. 
I have this housing and I need axles. But when I ask people, well, how wide is your housing and how wide do you need an axle for the left and the right? They're not the same length. I'll show you how step-by-step step to go through that. Also, if you're not a subscriber, like, subscribe, and comment. If you watched the last video, we're doing a giveaway. Like, subscribe, and comment on that video, and you'll be entered into a drawing to win a carbon fiber Hendrick Motorsports dash top, free of charge, sent to you. So like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think of this video, the last one, or any other video. Thanks for watching this. I appreciate the support that I've seen from you guys. A lot of great questions have come from these videos. I enjoy getting the messages that you send to me. You guys be safe, be kind, and have a great day.